Hi, I'm Daz. So it's back to the 70s today. Um, I've got a Sony TC135SD on the bench. Bought this from a Radio Rally some while ago. Um, and uh, it uh, looks like a reasonable deck from the time. It's got Dolby noise, ferrochrome and chromium settings, a pair of conventional VU meters. Rather plain Jane deck, but you know, it's um, quite a nice machine still. A couple of mic sockets on the front and headphones. So, I've got it powered up, I'm going to see what happens. Well, immediately I can see that the take up capstan is not working. We've got one channel not working, only the right is working, the left's just fluttering around. Just rewind the tape so I don't get a tangle. Yeah, so rewind's working. Fast forward, but definitely no take up. Okay, so, okay, so two things it could be. Could be that uh, there's a problem with the record playback switch because I notice the VU meter keeps going up and down, that's usually a good sign. So I'm going to shove it into record mode and just see if that clears it. I'm pushing in the uh, record protection tab so I can push the cord down. Let's see if there's any difference, see if I get the other channel now. No, I've still only got the right channel. Okay, I have got service and schematic for this one, so that should help. Okay, um, there's a screw I see in the top here, which probably helps release the top. Some screws in the bottom, so where do we start? Probably with the top, because it's the cassette mechanism I want to look at. Well, I've whipped the bottom off, and it looks like, oh yes, the uh, wood will come off, or the frame, whatever it is. So that's now off. Okay, so what have we got? So we've got the main audio circuit board on this side. This motor looks interesting. According to the circuit diagram, it's actually got a frequency generator on the back of it. And you can see the screen cables coming in here as well as the, looks like what might be the DC cable. So I wonder if that is a proper feedback. It does look like it. Well, that belt looks quite loose. This looks like it might be some sort of auto stop mechanism. Here's your typical idler there for fast forward and rewind them. Yeah, the belts are quite loose. Um, I like the screen transformer to minimise hum. And of course it's as far away from the deck as you can get. So there's a fork gone in there. I suppose my next question is... Ah, so I've removed the screw from the front. I assume that I've just got to take the sliders off and this will come, come away. Well, I was wondering why the diagram said to remove the voltage selector. Now I know why, because you can't get at it unless you take the voltage selector off. So that's that off now. Oh, now we can see the top. Lots of nice dust. You can see the mechanism proper. That's interesting how that uh, goes at an angle there. Very dusty. I think uh, have a bit of a clean up here before we go anywhere else. Okay, so just looking at the mechanism, I can see this drives rewind and also drives fast forward. So what is supposed to drive take up? Good question. Well, this ball is in contact, but the question is, what else should it be in contact with? I also noticed there's an idler here and I wondered for a moment whether that should be making contact. Okay, so there we go, we've got take up again. So what should have been driving it was this idler here. And it seems to be connected to the pause control. So a little push got it going. I suspect that the grease is a little bit stiff. Um, so there we go, so we've got contact now, yeah, and take up, so that's good. I can see that the uh, VU meter on the left channel is pegged again, so I think I'll give that a squirt of uh, 
contact cleaner when I can locate the record playback switch. Well, there we go. There's a pair of switches in this one. So they just need a quick shot of uh, contact cleaner if I can get it to focus. There we go. Let's zoom down a little bit more. There we go, that's better. So yeah, there's a pair of switches in this one. Well, we've got take up now. I've cleaned the record playback switch and we still have a pegged meter, so that's not so good. Unless there's actually something on the tracks or something that's causing the feedback. But again, it could be an open capacitor that's causing instability in an amplifier stage, but that's fairly pegged, that meter. Not good at all. The first thing I notice on the circuit board, of course, is we've got some of this gunk, but measuring it, it doesn't appear to be conductive, so maybe that's not the problem. This is just one half of the amplifier, that's the Dolby chip. Um, there's a transformer to drive the headphones, that's intriguing, and the VU meter, so I think we're starting perhaps at Q1 preamp and see if we've got audio down there and then work my way forward. That might be the, the way to do it. I've just got to work out which side of the amplifier is the one that's actually faulty, I'm not sure at the moment. I must confess I don't find this the most easiest thing to work on. I've got the board hanging out and it is so difficult to work on. Anyway, there's a preamp transistor on the head, which is these two, and on this one here there's no output on the collector, but there is on this one. So there is still the record playback head in uh, rec record playback switch in between it. So it does switch over to take the mic input, so it might be worth just seeing if if it's put in record mode, if a microphone gives us a input, that might tell us if there's something wrong with the switching. But no, this isn't working. I still don't think this is conductive, but we'll see. So if I touch a lead onto the base of that channel, you can see the meter goes whack off the end. Whereas on the good channel, nothing much happens. There is a slight increase in hum. So I suspect that uh, the amplifier is not connected to the head. I hope the head's not open circuit. Right, so we've got two channels again. Well, the fault actually turned out to be the pink lower pink wire on the head. One side of the head is grounded for playback and lifted to the bias and record amp and uh, I could get a ground on the switches but I couldn't get a ground on the head. It didn't look broken but when I gave it a yank it uh, broke off so it was simply the pink wire on the head. Nothing more complicated than that. The auto stop mechanism has started to move now but Unfortunately, there's another lever down there moving. Unfortunately, it doesn't function. I guess it's stuck grease. And trying to disassemble it and replace the grease is not going to be easy. That's the problem with the decks from the 70s. The grease seems to be an issue. And of course, we saw the idler for um, playback that got stuck. So this is not going to be easy. I've started disassembly and uh, I've removed the take up real drive so and uh, you can see the grease is quite thick. Um, this is the little cam that detects the movement of the reel. There's a little tiny tiny um, e-clip on here. I just hope I don't lose that or it springs off when I put it back. Close up of the uh, with the flywheel removed. I will try and remember to measure belts this time but obviously they're going to be in the stretched form just so that I've got a record. I'm still trying to figure out how come this is stuck um, but there is a spring on that. Looks like 
from what I can work out this mechanism is removable, the auto stop mechanism so maybe I might unscrew that and see if that will come out as a spring here. So this is the uh, flywheel belt, it's a uh, one millimetre square belt. I expect the best way for me to measure is to put the belt across here and just tighten it up. Now what, what would you regard as tight there? It's about 130. There we go. Auto stop belt, about 0.9. What's that, about 95? A bit tighter? At 97. Obviously they're stretched. Counter, that's a, another 0.9 square belt. Right. Let's see. Ooh. It's, are my calipers big enough? Just, just getting tight now. What's that? Yeah, 130. Just looking at how the auto stop works, so this lever is pressed down, which pushes onto this bar, which is currently not being held in position very well. When that bar is pushed down, that's what releases all the controls. So it does work in multiple operations, that's good. The spring here, and this is the mechanism that goes up and down, driven from the motor. There we go. So I, I, there's two screws here, I wonder if that can come right out. It's, the diagram appears to say it can. Yes indeed, this does undo, although I'm having trouble because ideally I need to remove this bit here to remove it. But I'm just thinking actually I might now have enough access to clean the grease up that's down here and uh, I've, I've got enough access to probably clean it. I'm, I'm <laughs> always nervous about taking things too far to bits and then not be able to get them back together but uh, call me a chicken but there we go here's the take up clutch you can see there's a little felt pad here and you can see an adjuster there that just varies the tension so you can adjust the take up tension here's it disassembled even more you can see how slow that is to return I uh, guess that's the grease around here that's uh, a little bit sticky. I'm just cleaning that off now. So this is close up the auto stop mechanism. So I haven't quite figured out how it works yet. Right, well we are really disassembled now. Here's the slider. There's the gear wheel. That just pulled off and it's got a spring holding it in place. I assume it's some sort of clutch. Basically, I guess that um, what I'll be doing is shafts. I'll be cleaning shafts and re-lubricating them. Any rubber parts that make contact and drive need to be cleaned and not have lubricant on them. Um, bearing for the um, flywheel, it's going to need um, some oil. And I'll just re-grease. I have some plastic compatible grease, so I shall put that back in and... Uh, even oh look at that I think even that's gonna to have to come off next can you see how slowly it's moving well I'd say that's fairly disassembled so I'm not going to use my plastics grease and start reassembling it I've had photographs on the um, compact camera so if I get stuck hopefully I can refer to that um, you can now see how that's responding just shows what happens to that grease not easy to show but the little paddle that sits under the take-up spool there's a little lever and when that is pushed can you see the bronze bit being lifted up hopefully hopefully I'm going far enough and what you can see is the cam here 
being lifted up, so it's pushing the cam up, so that should mean it goes further and activates the auto stop. At the moment I'm uh, just cleaning up the uh, play controls and the stop lever. Just all full of this, well, treacly grease. Several hours later I'm now in the process of just cleaning things up. Cleaning the tape path, etc. and just reassembling. It's uh, quite a time consuming thing and I've got no guarantee it'll even work so <laughs> a labour of love I'd say. So there we go. Quite surprisingly dirty. Well the first thing I noticed when I turned it back on is I had a left le pegged left channel again. The head is connected so I've just gone record playback and it's cleared so I'm going to have to look at that again. Right, let's see what happens now. Aha, uh -huh, that looks good. So let's try fast forward. Yep, and rewind should do it by itself. Excellent. Okay, so we've got auto stop so after all that effort it was worthwhile. taco signal coming back from the motor. I just thought it would be interesting just to have a look at that. Very peculiar waveform but uh, yeah. I suppose it'd be a good thing to say that the speed control was down there on the motorboard. Just there. It's uh, been put in a very convenient point where you can just access it from this side of the circuit board. Right, she's all together. Right, what else have I done? Um, I have cleaned off that adhesive the best I can where it's electrically conductive and re-cleaned the record playback switches. Now I've got a couple of microphones plugged into it. One, two, one, two, one, two. Um, and this is where we can see this limiter working, isn't it? One, two, one, two. Switch limiter on. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's doing a very, very good job. One, two, one, two. Okay, let's make a test recording. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are testing the Sony TC135SD. I am now going to switch the limiter on. Testing the Sony TC135SD from around 1975. One, two, three, end of test. No. I had to uh, turn the amplifier off because uh, I nearly deafened myself with the feedback. Boarding. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are testing the Sony TC135SD. I am now going to switch the limiter on. Testing the Sony TC135SD from around 1975. One, two, three, end of test. It's a nice sounding deck. It sounds solid. I think having a taco on the motor actually helps to reduce the wear and flutter. But it's a very nice deck for the age of it, um, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, no capacitors changed. Um, as for the instability, not seen any trace of it since. As I said, I've re-cleaned the contacts and removed that adhesive and it all seems very, very well um, now. And of course the head hasn't got any wear on it because it's a ferret head so it's going to be pretty tough. Anyway, I think that'll do for this one. Thanks for watching and I think there's about another 10 cassette decks to go through. Oh dear. Mm-hmm. <laughs>